This week on Freshly Cultured, Mandy spent some time with one of her closest friends, Patricia Kihoro. Me, but have I ever said that I'm an expert in the kitchen? <laughs> have I? The vlogger, blogger, writer, singer, and radio host knows a thing or two about cooking. But will she be able to recreate her dad's famous beef and broccoli stir fry? He used to try and get me in the kitchen to cook with him, and he was making a stir fry. Then I was like, oh crap, why wasn't I paying attention? So join us this week on Freshly Cultured with Mandy and Patricia. This beautiful Kenyan singer, songwriter, actress, radio and reality television personality rose to fame on Tusca Project Fame's third season, making it all the way to the finals. Since then, her career has skyrocketed. There's one thing my dad told me when I was 17, and it's about work and loving the work that you do. And that's why a lot of people say that I, I work really hard. And in hindsight, I never felt like it because I'm doing things that I love. And yes, now I'm good at curating music and now I'm going into music supervision for film. And then now I'm going into content creation, which I love. Wow! Shining, shining like an African queen. She starred in films like Miss Nobody, Rush, Groove Theory, Rafiki and Makutaru Junction. She's also made quite a name for herself in the world of radio on both 1FM and Homeboys. As a mega influencer, she often puts her life out there. But her approach is certainly different than many others doing the same thing. There have been parts of my life that I've shared that have been kind of personal, but I wanted to share for that very reason. This culture of comparison since childhood. And the first time I shared something personal like that, the feedback that I got was so amazing because people were sharing their experiences and it helped me to feel like, okay, so I'm not the only one going through this, I'm not alone. And so that's what has informed the personal things that I share. It makes you insecure about yourself because you're not firm in your belief in who you are. I think it's important for us to get to a point where we really just love ourselves the way we are. It takes time, especially if these are things that were internalized when you are impressionable and in your teens. I'm always thinking, okay, I need to join the gym, I need to get smaller. It's like a mild form of body dysmorphia. Yeah, I struggle with that quite a bit till today. So what's the one thing about Patricia that her adoring community may not know? A polymath is somebody who's good at multiple things, right? They can thrive in two, three, four, five skills, talents, and they can shine in all of them. And yes, I love radio, and yes, now I'm good at curating music, and now I'm going into music supervision for film. Somehow, society makes you feel like you're so all over the place, but learning that it's, it's a strength. And I'm also learning to work with some of my weaknesses so that I can sort of pursue everything at 100. But today it's all about food and rehashing some incredible memories. So my dad is fantastic in the kitchen. I remember once going to Nigeria for this reality show and they had said that we're gonna have to cook food from our country. And the first person I called was my dad. Dad, tell me what to cook. And we now know where she gets her love for the kitchen from. So there's one time he came home, he just told me, I need you in the kitchen with me because I need to show you how I'm doing this. And he was making a stir fry. And he made that stir fry just step by step. And I was so disinterested. And I remember finally when we got to eat the meal, I was like, what is this heaven? What were some of the most memorable dishes your mom used to cook growing up? My mom, not so much. Mm -hmm. um, That's good. And I'm not going to say any more about that because <laughs> I love you, mom. <laughs> my dad was the primary, like, he was the one who was in the kitchen <laughs> most of the time. My mom was often seen a very blue moon. So they taught me that things are not supposed to be a certain way. Like, you can live your life the way you want to live it. Go on, go on, go on, 
Twa Dada Niko Ndanika Nimbaya Niko Radaya Mashada Niko Nja First up, Beyond Fruits, a place that Patricia is quite familiar with. This is like heaven to me. I love all the colors, I love all the fruits. For me, I'm also very, I think about aesthetics a lot. So if a place is pretty, I'm definitely going to go in and shop. And this for me is everything. I love it. Grapefruit right now is my favorite fruit. It's good for, it's not too sweet. It doesn't have too much sugar because a lot of people don't know that fruits have a lot of hidden sugar. So for instance, coconut water is great for, if you go to the gym quite a bit, it's, it's a good refresher and a hydrator. Um, it's a great detoxifier. It's good for your body just to cleanse it out and um, at least they pack it in bottles so you can, you can have it, you know, portable for you. Her workout videos with mom have become quite the trend on Instagram. I was talking to my mom and I was telling her, yo, I'm Going back to the gym 1st of July, it's been two and a half months now. In fact, my most recent post on Instagram is a video just showing snippets. Are you ah. Smile. It's been really fun. She's really enjoyed it. Day one, she was scared. She thought that working out at a gym means kuchoka, yani kuchoka umemalizika. Look, her glasses, they get foggy. <laughs> how your high school, right, has influenced, like, let's say, or shaped how your relationship with food could have become? First of all, high school is where I gained a lot of weight. And I gained so much weight, and I feel like that's where my issues with my body began. I remember an aunt of mine uh, seeing stretch marks and telling me that stretch marks are, are a sign of somebody being fat. So in my head, it was just that, it doesn't matter if I'm slim, if I have stretch marks, I'm going to be fat. And she said that so flippantly. I was very clear with my trainer that I'm trying to build a booty. So that's what we're doing and um, he's very good at that. But it's an interesting journey because, you know, now that I'm building muscle, I'm getting stronger, it's less about the aesthetics of it and more about how I'm feeling. Late October, November, that's when we're gonna start now trimming down the fat so that we can <laughs> reveal ah, the shape. Wow. I have my body goal. There's a person who has the same body type as I do. So that's what I showed to my trainer, Morris, and I was like, Ivo, yo. At the moment, he did give me a meal plan. I haven't been following it very strictly. Sorry, Morris. <laughs> Thanks. All of us. <laughs> How would you describe the older you to the younger you? Although I didn't really have any expectations, but honestly, I would just say that um, your life took a really interesting turn. Everything that you wanted to do, you are doing, but not in the ways that you expected. Mm -hmm. But also I knew that singing was a thing that I was going to do. What I like to cook amani mani njotasema. Walk me through the kind of food you post on the gram versus what you eat in real life. Mm -hmm. My content doesn't revolve around, you know, brands I'm working with or a certain picture I have to post. It's the other way around. My content revolves around my life. Yes. But then there's other things that I have chosen to keep private. <laughs> so things like romantic relationships or certain friendships. And that's because of honoring and respecting the other parties. But you know, in life, sometimes people feel like if you're keeping something from them, it's a secret and oh, what is she hiding? And for me, it's like, bro. Yeah. Have you ever posted a meal when you messed it up? But I don't mess up meals. Okay, well, well, for me, the messing up is the perfection of it. It means I've invented a new meal. Messing up. What do you mean? Let's Mess pick up. this perfect avocado of yours. Let's pick it. Let's see how great your skills are. Like for me, avocado, the main thing I use avocado for is guacamole. Yo. And I like uh, crunchy guap, so it's something that you can chew rather than spread like butter, like butter or mayo. 
will you take over and cook for us the meal? Like, can we switch roles? Because you're the polymath. Me, but have I ever said that I'm an expert in the kitchen? <laughs> have I? Have I? Have I ever claimed to be a throwdown princess? You've never, but but you know what? For those who may not know about Patricia being a polymath, I want to share with you more about that. When we're in the kitchen, so you can get to know what a polymath is and all it takes to be able to live within that space. Mm -hmm. I had to get ready because I can't wait to cook you up the stir fry and thank you so much for the ingredients. Yes. Well, as you go to create some content, I'm gonna be here cooking up a storm. I really hope I can live up to your dad's stir fry. I feel like the pressure's on though. Do your best. Right. If you need help, don't call me. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Bye. Now, as Patricia is shooting her content, it's time for me to work on this beef stir fry. I'm gonna start things off with marinating the meat. So we're adding in some salt and a little bit of black pepper as well. We're also gonna be adding in our soy sauce into here. And we're also gonna go in with about half a tablespoon of ginger garlic paste. Now, fun fact that a lot of people may not know about ginger is that it's such a good tenderizer as well, just outside of being a great flavoring agent. It's a great tenderizer. Plus, a lot of people don't know that actually ginger has a little hint of chili in it. So as a result, it's gonna add a little bit of spice into your food. You know what? I'm just gonna be gangsta and go in with my hands. So you never want to, you know, put a lot of salt while you're seasoning it. Because also remember, soy sauce has a lot of sodium unless you're using low sodium soy sauce. So now that our meat is marinated, we're going to start things off by browning it first. So let's get our pan nice and hot. Now, for this recipe, we're gonna be using fresh fried garlic oil. I do want to say I really love that, you know, you have the strip here to be able to know if you're running low or you're really good on your oil. And also, you can be able to measure the amount of oil you want to use. So we're just gonna go in to brown our meat. Now, one of the major reasons why you want to brown your meat is because it's going to release a lot of moisture. The moisture that it's released, I'm going to keep saving some of it, or rather now it's stock broth, and we're going to use it when we're making the stir fry to just add a little bit more flavor. So we're just going to let that moisture again escape. But I do want to share a great shopping tip for a lot of people, of course, because we go grocery shopping a lot. Please do not go grocery shopping if you have not eaten anything. It is the easiest way to get carried away and buy the wrong things that you don't need in the supermarket. You can snacks, you can get snacks, you can spend more money there than to buy wholesome food that will give you fuel to, you know, take you through the day, take you through the week, and you just want something that's nutritious. So always go shopping after you've eaten, never before you've eaten. Now, a lot of people may not know this about Patricia, but she's one of the most selfless, loving people ever. There was a time about a couple years ago where I was completely broke and had just come from like traveling and uh, Patricia came over to my house and she made sure that I had one of the most memorable birthdays. She took her friend's car, drove me all the way to Olopolos and we enjoyed some Yamachoma and some really, really good memories. So I don't know if I've ever told her thank you enough, but I'm hoping today I'll get to do that when I serve her up this feast. Now that our meat has completely browned, we're just gonna set it to the side. You also don't want to overcook your meat, to be honest. We're definitely gonna build a little bit more flavor into it. A lot of people don't know this, but when you brown your meat first, all the flavor gets trapped right there. So as a result, the pan is gonna help build flavors onto everything else. So we're just gonna add in just a little bit more um, of the garlic oil, fresh fried garlic oil, and then we're gonna start with our onions. And because we want to maintain the crunch, 
We're not gonna be cooking anything for so long at this point. We're just gonna add in our peppers. We're also gonna add in our broccoli. And we're gonna go in with some ginger garlic paste. Now you don't wanna add in the ginger garlic paste just a little bit too early because it's gonna start burning and you can smell it. Okay, we're gonna be adding in just a little bit of the soy. And then finally, we're gonna add back in our meat. Now lastly, we're gonna go in with our sesame seeds. Now a lot of people who love Simpsons, you would love sesame seeds. We're just gonna add in our spring onions. Just for a little bit of like a kick and flavor as well. Now this is one of those meals, if you're in a rush, you could whip it up in a couple of minutes. It just, it's under 30 minutes type of cook, including of prep time. And because you want everything to remain crunchy, you don't want to overcook anything. And just like that, we're done, ready to serve. And I hope I did Patricia proud with this recipe. So the spread is ready. Oh my God. Beef stir fry is the star of the show, the supporting cast. So we have sweet potatoes here that are grilled and we serve them up with some chimichurri sauce. So the good thing about sweet potato with the fact that you work out, you know, they keep you fuller for longer, yes. full of vitamin A and C. So that's really good. We have brown rice if you feel like you don't want to have the sweet potato. And we have some red uh, cabbage. Oh, I'm really excited. It smells so good. Yeah. And you're right, sweet potatoes are good carbs. Yep. There's a lot of people who think that, you know, when you're trying to lose weight, you have to cut out carbs and I don't know what, but sweet potatoes are bae. You know, you're a polymath who does a ton of things. Do you find yourself sometimes dedicating much more time to, let's say, acting than the other things that you love doing? Um, you know, I used to get that question a lot. Like, what's the thing you do more? What's the thing you love most? Mm -hmm. And I realized in trying to answer that question that all these things that I love are they're intertwined, so I don't have to separate them. They each bring each other out. Yes. They're the flavor to each other. Yes. So one, I, I'm not self-described. That is something that was assigned to me and it made a lot of sense. And you realize that there's many people just like you. It's not that you're all over the place. It's just that you have a vast ability to thrive in everything, so that's, where I feel I am. <laughs> so I'm waiting to hear what you have to say about the food after your first bite. Mm. I love how the flavors are marrying with each other. Now outside of just the meal that I made, I also made us a little drink here. Mm -hmm. I need you to take a little sip and let me know what you think. Wow. <laughs> Wow, 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 this is so good. Yeah, and it's quite refreshing, especially the fact that you've just bitten into a chili. Have you ever taken a sip of something and then you can't stop? Yeah. This is it. Yeah. We used uh, grapefruit, grapefruit juice, and we also used some strawberry syrup. So we muddled the strawberries and then added in some grapefruit, some sparkling water, some ice cubes, and you're good to go. Mm. Very simple to the point and refreshing. I can feel it in my elbows. I have never heard somebody say that. No, seriously. <laughs> As a woman who inspires so many young girls, especially from your content creation, the fact that you're a polymath, what's something that you would say to young girls who are currently experiencing like self-doubt, a lot of imposter syndrome, or even procrastinating on their dreams? I would say that where they are right now and who they are is exactly who they're supposed to be. Whether it's criticism, whether it's compliments, whether what, not everybody who speaks on what it is that you do or who you are is valid. Listen to yourself first. That's what I would say, yeah. And anybody that you look up to, anybody that you admire, don't compare yourself to them. Find the common thread between you and them and then use that as inspiration and motivation to grow and to evolve. That word influencer has really taken a beating over the last few years. If I'm influencing them to do something, then that makes me an influencer. But when these platforms began, it was just an, a place to express yourself. I feel like the people who follow me are not just a number, they're a community that I've built. Um, so when it comes to conversations around mental health and how we're doing, you know, highs and lows, dealing with things like imposter syndrome and self-doubt. 
and I'm very cautious and wary about the energy that I put out into the world because I don't want that. I don't want to put out bad stuff. Um, those are things that I've shared because part of the thing that compounds the feeling of despair is thinking that you're the only one going through it and so there's something wrong with you. When people learn these things from each other, then it, it, that is a form of therapy. What was some of the greatest advice that your parents gave you that made you explore being the polymath that you are? My dad said something to me once, and it's, you know, right around, it's similar to this phrase that said a lot about, you know, if you do the thing you love, you'll never work a day in your life. But he phrased it different and he just said that if you're doing something that you love, mm -hmm. when you wake up, you're going to be excited to get to it. And it doesn't matter how much work it takes, how many hours you work, you're going to be excited to wake up in the morning. My folks and I have been close pretty much all my life. We have a really nice, friendly relationship. It's very chill. I've always felt like my parents are quite liberal, um, not your typical Kenyan or African parents. Yes, we've known each other for a long time, but our parents actually knew each other. Even uh, before. We even met. before. And I have to say that and this is something that really influenced my decision, like even more to go into music and the arts. My mom and I had gone for a wedding when I was about 10. Mm -hmm. This is in 1996. And your dad and the band were performing at the wedding. And of course I was a huge fan because my mom used to play the mushrooms in the car all the time and I knew all the songs. So when my mom is like, oh yeah, the mushrooms are here, let's go say hi. And I was like, what do you mean, let's go say hi? And she's like, yeah, they're my friends. And I'm like, what do you mean, they're your friends? And back then, we didn't have cell phones, there was no selfies, nothing. So they gave me their business card and they each signed and said something to me. And I, I know that card is still in my mom's house mm -hmm. with my stuff. And I had it with me for the longest time. I think up until uni, at some point, I still had it. Patricia, thank you so much for coming through, letting me cook for you. This is something I do for you often though. Like I cook for you often enough. <laughs> but as your friend, I think I'm just like much more excited to see what lies ahead because I feel like for a huge chunk of your life, you've lived in the limelight actually. I feel like I've always had the confidence to not necessarily feel like I have to fit into a certain box or I have to do things a certain way. And a big part of that is because of my parents. Creativity in the kitchen is not the only thing that runs in Patricia's family. It's safe to say that Mandy did a great job with the meal, but there's nothing quite like dad's cooking. Did I live up to your dad's recipe, mm -hmm. or even better? I'll be honest, it's a little bit different, mm -hmm. but flavor-wise, it's just as rich. Okay. Yes, you've done well. 